So this is flashback episode two. This is one of my favorite runs uh, from the superhero days of the early 90s. Uh, this is Archer and Armstrong volume one, issues zero through 12, except um, issue number nine is not included. I'll explain why in a moment. And this introduced Archer and Armstrong, two of the main characters that are still part of the Valiant universe. The stories were co-written by Jim Shooter and Barry Winter Smith. Barry Winter Smith did the pencils. But after Jim Shooter was gone from Valiant after issue two of the series, Barry Winter Smith just took over the writing. And it's one of my favorite runs because Barry Winter Smith shows a lot of humor. A lot of his work can be very serious, like his Weapon X or even Monsters. And it can sometimes be a bit of a downer. But this actually shows a lot of wit and humor and not just dry British humor, even though there's a lot of it, but it's just a really interesting, well done comic. So I just thought I'd talk about it for a minute. Oh, issue zero, I got signed by uh, Jim Shooter. I met him at a con um, several years ago. But basically the whole story is that there's Archer and Armstrong. Archer is Obadiah Archer. He's a young American boy who um, has these phenomenal Athletic is not his parents. He's very religious because his parents or his father's an evangelical preacher And he doesn't realize but you find out early on that um, His parents are using their power as far as being preachers. They're um, Really sick people they you know hurt and sexually abuse young people that come to them for guidance um, Later on he accidentally discovers what they're up to they try to kill him, burn the house down. Uh, he has a near-death experience, but decides, no, I don't want to go. I, I want to come and get my vengeance. So, even though as hokey as it sounds, um, he decides to run away. He's on a steamer, ends up at a temple where he perfects his physical gifts. But um, he goes back, and then finally he goes back to America. He's walking on the street in L.A., and he bumps into Aram, who we know as Armstrong. And he says, hey, you got five bucks? And he's like, hey, sure, the take is what I have. He goes, you sure? And he goes, hey, no one from the temple can refuse alms. So they just start talking. And what you find out is that, Ar that Archer went back home and then found out that his parents were busted for their crimes not long after. So there's really no way for him to get any kind of vengeance. So he's kind of lost. And... This is basically one of those things where two guys team up and they're totally different people because uh, he's Archer is very straight and narrow and Armstrong is one of three brothers. Him, Gilad, who's the Eternal Warrior, and Ivar, who's Ivar the Time Walker. And they're essentially immortal. They've been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And Armstrong is being chased after by this cult that swore that he's the devil. So those are like the main protagonists, but there's also a lot of humor on the way because Armstrong will tell Archer, oh, this reminds me of the time that um, I was in France with Marie Antoinette. And and at first Archer's like, oh, these, these stories are ridiculous, but then you find out eventually that they're all true. Uh, the art by Barry Windsor Smith is his usual great clean art. Um, this cover is by Frank Miller. This was, he did the covers for um, the first eight chapters of Unity, or actually the second through ninth chapter of unity but still great barry windsor smith art great writing these first issues with barry windsor smith are more dialogue based uh the second set of unity chapters were uh, the covers were drawn by walt simonson and so um they're in this unity battle and they introduced turok the dinosaur hunter just great art here and then after issue two Jim Shooter left and when Jim Shooter left the book started using Archer keeping a diary in his narration to kind of like be the narration of the book and kind of like explain his thoughts on things you're still seeing a lot of dialogue and I just love these covers and um, just goes on as far as their adventures is trying to escape this cult running to these uh, old friends of Armstrong. Don't want to give away too much. 
but it's, like I said, it's beautiful art, as always, by Barry Windsor Smith. This one has dinosaurs. I think dinosaurs were the rage back in the early 90s. I love this Barry Windsor Smith, kind of like a Rubenesque type of um, dream sequence. It's really lovely. And more work. Another Barry Windsor Smith cover. And then these are ads for like some really lame Valiant books because when Jim Shooter left, um, that was basically it. And then issue eight is an exercise issue. It's basically the three musketeers, but with um, Archer Armstrong and their brother Ivar, the time walker. And they all end up going back in time. And it's a really, very well done story. A lot of humor here. Um, Pinups from other um, Valiant artists. And issue number nine, I skipped because it wasn't drawn or written by Barry Winston Smith. I think that he did a double issue here, so he took an issue off. So it kind of furthers the story, but it's kind of like a fill-in issue, and it's kind of lame. And then later on, what you find is that here they introduce Ivar, the Time Walker. This is Armstrong and Galad's third brother. So I mean, remaining brother. And he's a Time Walker because he waits for these time portals to open up. He can't open them up himself and he waits for them because you'll find out that he's trying to go back in time to go back to his love Nefertiti. So they end up meeting in London in um, Ivor's apartment and this is where you start seeing these yellow boxes. You start seeing the use of the um, narration diary tool um, by Archer and then there's a sequence when he goes oh Egyptian Queen maybe Nefertiti and he's like my word this is a photograph because Ivar will go back in time when he saw her and took pictures. So um, this furthers the, basically they end up with all these characters that are captured through time. And then the penultimate issue of the run features Solar Man, the Atom. And Barry Windsor Smith, in my opinion, was the only person that could actually draw Solar and make him look cool. Everybody else really made him look kind of lame because his uniform is just a red jumpsuit with goggles but somehow Windsor Smith can make him look cool um and then kind of resolves this issue that's going on and then the final issue wraps up everything where Bar and Barry Windsor Smith kind of leaves it almost where they start in the same place and it ends so um, the reason I mentioned this is that this is actually being collected by Valiant and after um, you know, um, having it listed in previews for several years, for two, three, four years, I think three years, they're finally supposed to be published this month, released this month as a collection for $39.95, the, the first uh, zero issues, zero through 12. And um, you could go that route. You could try to go through the dollar bins. Um, might come out the same, might come out a little bit more because of the trade, but the trade is complete. Um, but this is a really wonderful little um, run. It really shows up a funny, humorous, whimsical side of Barry Windsor Smith's writing that you don't normally see. Um, and just shows just why he's so good. I mean, yeah, I know I'm a Barry Windsor Smith fan, but I just remember that the story, and I, re I reread these recently, and the story is just still, is pretty good. It's not, it's not so dated. Um, that you're like, oh yeah, this is really lame. Like if you read, like, I'm sorry, but if you read like a lot of 1960s comics today or 1980s comics or 90s comics, you're like, oh, this is terrible. This still holds um, its weight as far as story goes. So um, you can look for these in the dollar bin or you could um, just get the collection. But I just wanted to mention it because this is a nice trip down memory lane for me and I'm glad I finally got all these together. Thanks.